On August 1st, 1815, when Angelica Longrider took her first gulp of air on this earth, there was nothing about the baby to suggest that she would become the greatest woodwoman in Tennessee. The newborn was scarcely taller than her mother and couldn't climb a tree without help. Although her father gave her a shiny new axe to play with in the cradle, like any good Tennessee father would, she was a full two years old before she built her first log cabin. But by the time she was full grown, she was second to none in buckskin bravery, performing eye-popping wonders in the bogs and backwoods of Tennessee. When she was 12, a wagon train got mired in dejection swamp. The settlers had abandoned their covered wagons and nearly all hope besides. Suddenly, a young woman in a homespun dress tramped toward them out of the mist. She lifted those wagons like they were twigs in a puddle and set them on high ground. It's an angel, cried the gate mouth pioneer. Ever since that time, Angelica Longrider has been known as Swamp Angel. To this day, stories about Swamp Angel spring up like sunflowers along the wagon trails, and every one of them is true. Once upon a summer in the Tennessee wilderness, there prowled a huge bear with a bottomless appetite for settler's grub. Why, that varmint would rip the door off a food cellar and gobble up the whole winter's rations without waiting for a napkin. He came to be known as Thundering Tarnation because those were the words most commonly heard when he was spotted in the neighborhood. Many tried, but none could catch that low-down pile of pelts. He was fast and wily, and his fur so thick the gunshot never reached his skin. Before long, Thundering Tarnation had cleaned out half the root cellars in Tennessee. The settlers were desperate with no food to get them through the long winter ahead. So they sent word across the land of a competition to kill that bear. The reward for the successful hunter was to be Tarnation's enormous pelt, equal to a whole year's hunting and worth a whole lot more on account of his fame. Beyond that, the winner would earn a powerful reputation and the title of Champion Wildcat. Now, it's well known and a fact too that Tennessee daredevils are as plentiful as dewdrops on corn. Pretty soon there was a long line of men in coonskin caps waiting to sign up for the hunt. But when Swamp Angel stepped in line, one of those buckskins called out, Hey Angel, shouldn't you be home mending a quilt? Says she, quiltin' is men's work. Well, how about baking a pie, Angel? I aim to, says she, a bear pie. Their hoots and taunts didn't stop Swamp Angel from signing up and setting out to find that bear. Tarnation left a pretty clear trail. The first hunter was found wearing an empty molasses bucket, a silly grin on his face. Seems he tried the sweet approach and got licked in more ways than one. It took ten strong men to rescue the next hunter from his own bear trap. A third set out with a hardened hickory club and ended up waist deep, deep in toothpicks. Another was discovered wandering in circles, clutching two fistfuls of fur. His head was completely bald, his beard mighty scarce. Seems he traded pelts with thundering tarnation and got the worst of the bargain. Soon Swamp Angel was the only one left who hadn't met up with Tarnation. Until one morning she awoke from dozing in the shade of a creek to find that four-legged forest of stubble staring at her across the stream. They faced off for a few minutes. Varmint, says Angel. I'm much obliged for that pelt you're carrying. Grrr, says Tarnation. Then they waded into the stream and commenced to fight. Swamp Angel took hold of that bear and tossed him so high he was still on the way up at nightfall. Even when the first star came out, there was no sign of him. Angel began to think she had lost him in the sky. Now, Angel was bound and determined to get that tarnation's pelt. Just at that moment, a tornado whirled by with a spout clear up to the clouds. Swamp Angel grabbed hold of it and swung the twister around like a giant lasso in the heavens. She roped that bristled bandit and brought him crashing back to earth. Locked in a bear hug, Swamp Angel and Thundering Tarnation wrestled across the hills of Tennessee. They stirred up so much dust that those hills are still called the Great Smoky Mountains. They fought three days and three nights without a break. On the fourth day, they wrestled their way into a lake 50 feet deep. Tarnation pinned Angel to the muddy bottom with one of his gigantic paws. To get a breath of air, she had to drink the whole lake dry. That was mighty refreshing, says Angel. But it didn't look good for Angel, down in the muck under that mountain of mange. No matter how she struggled, she could not free herself from Tarnation's paw. 
Then Angel had an idea. She opened her tobacco pouch and emptied it onto the end of Tarnation's nose. He sniffed, threw back his head, and sneezed so hard the mud flew off the lake bottom and Angel with it. She hiked back 10 miles from where she had landed and the fight commenced once more. Swamp Angel and Tarnation finally grew so tired they fell asleep, but that didn't stop them. They wrestled in their sleep. Tarnation snored louder than a rock slide while Angel snored like a locomotive in a thunderstorm. Their snoring rumbled through the earth, tumbling boulders and shaking trees loose. By morning, they had snored down nearly the whole forest. The second biggest pine tree in Tennessee landed smack beside them. At the top of that tree was a beehive the size of a hill, oozing rivers of honey. After five days without food, Tarnation couldn't resist. He rolled over in his sleep and sank his jaws into the sweet syrupy torrent. As he guzzled and slurped, Swamp Angel snored down one last tree. It fell right on top of thundering Tarnation. That bear was dead as a stump and considerably flatter. When Angel awoke and saw what had happened, she plucked off her hat, bowed her head, and offered up these words of praise. Confound it, vermin, if you weren't the most wondrous heap of trouble I ever come to grips with. That night, Tarnation fed everyone in Tennessee, I can tell you. It was the biggest celebration the state had ever seen. There were bear steaks and bear cakes, bear muffins and bear stuffing, bear roast and bear toast. To wash it all down, there was very wine. You could hear waistcoat buttons popping as far away as Kentucky. The leftovers filled all the empty storehouses in Tennessee just before the first snowfall. Swamp Angel decided to keep Thundering Tarnation's pelt as a rug. It was too big for Tennessee, so she moved to Montana and spread that bear rug out on the ground in front of her cabin. Nowadays, folks call it the short grass prairie.